Hi guys, you're welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Awesome. I apologize deeply for I've not uploaded um some videos for quite some time now. Basically because of um medical school exams. I mean like medical school have been showing me shaky time stairs to power or more. Like so I really didn't have the time to do but anyway this period I think I'll be uploading new videos okay guys so today is a very like this video is a highly requested one and it's about the tips for studying pharmacology so a um, medical student that just um passed a second mbbs exam or first mbbs exam at some school college and then has successfully entered into the um basic clinical training you understand um are looking for various ways they can you know tackle pharmacology as a course they might have heard so much about pharmacology how volatile it is how you cram a of things and all whatnot but in this video i'm going to be sharing with you guys tips that will make learning pharmacology very easy and fun okay um i'm going to be dividing this video into two sections one of the sections i'll basically talk about um the study materials and in another section i'll be talking about the study tips so right in this video i'll be talking about the study tips and then i'll talk about the study materials in the subsequent video so i'm going to be giving you a plethora of tips that will help you if you'll be able to follow them judiciously before um we continue this video if i've not subscribed to this channel kindly subscribe to this channel like this video and turn on your notification bell so that each time I upload a new video you will be the first person to be notified now let us get right into the video now um, in no particular order I'll be sharing these tips as they come now the first one I'm going to be talking about is know your business your business is very very important when I talk about the basis of pharmacology I mean um, the very first chapters of pharmacology your pharmacokinetics your pharmacodynamics your autonomic nervous system um, pharmacology like these are the real meat of pharmacology now why it's very, very important for you to know the business is that no matter where they drag you to in pharmacology you always find your grounds I mean when you don't know the basis of something you will always be lost some persons will just enter um, reading you know systemic pharmacology probably because I feel like it is quite interesting because I've interacted with a lot of persons and they'll tell me the general pharmacology is a very boring aspect of pharmacology but it is not true probably it might be boring but then that that is the real basis of pharmacology and you shouldn't ignore it because if you do it will haunt you and then you might end up just cramming the whole course without really understanding because you don't know your basis so guys if you have not studied in-depthly the pharmacokinetics the whole pharmacokinetic principles and their parameters the pharmacodynamics we are talking about the mechanism of actions you know this mechanism of actions involves the interaction of the drugs or the ligands with various receptors and you don't know these receptors you don't know their actions you don't know if an agonist activates alpha 1 receptor what effect will it produce you don't know if an agonist activate alpha 2 receptor beta 1 receptor beta 2 receptor what will it produce you don't even know the locations of these various receptors how are you going to enjoy reading your pharmacology because you'll be hearing these things over and over and over again so guys the very first thing i'm going to tell you guys is to know your basis now tip number two i'm going to be sharing you is know your basic physiology of the particular aspect of pharmacology you want to study before actually actually diving into that aspect let me just give you an instance you want to read antihypertensive and you don't know the physiology of um you know blood pressure you don't know about your cardiac output you don't know about the various factors that are affecting your cardiac output you don't know about the peripheral vascular resistance you don't know anything about these things you don't know about your systolic pressure you don't know about your diastolic pressure like how are you going to understand antihypertensive you just end up just cramming it and then you don't really understand what's going on and then that is when um reading that pharmacological aspect will become so stressful for you now um before i read a particular system in pharmacology i usually go to my guiding and then i try to review yes i've done this physiology but i try to get an understanding about this physiology once again now i'll still use the antihypertensive for instance to just cite it you want to study about antihypertensive there are some antihypertensives that act in order to reduce the cardio um the cardiac output there are other other antihypertensives anti that act to reduce the peripheral vascular resistance and all these things are 
aim at doing what? At reducing the blood pressure. Some antihypertensive act by reducing blood volume, like the diuretics and stuff like that. And then you don't know you're running angiotensin that does steroid system. Like you won't basically understand what is going on. So before you actually dive into the real aspect of the pharmacology, try to review your normal physiology because it will give you that very basics that you need to understand that aspect. Another thing I'm going to talk about is videos. Guys, before I actually study anything in pharmacology, even if I've studied it before, I'll always watch videos. Um, there are lots of, um, we have plethora of videos online on YouTube. You know, we have our Kaplan videos, we have our Speedy Pharmacology, we have our Sketchy Pharmacology, and many other videos. These videos are very helpful, especially for visual learners. Now, these videos help to incite you, like helps to, you know, put you in that aspect. Okay, let me just say, before you actually study, um, let me just say, autonomic um, um, pharmacology, you watch the video online you'll be able to get some insights and be like okay look at what i'm expecting why i'm going to be studying autonomic fish, um, pharmacology and then it will actually make sense to you than just reading it straight up from the textbooks and stuff like that so guys if you are not a video type of person please videos are very helpful now the next thing i'm going to be talking about is um, remembering drug names i think one of the most difficult aspects of pharmacology is the drugs are too much and then you are expected to know as much as you can and so students always come down with uh, having difficulties in remembering drug names now there are very other ways you can easily remember these drug names and i'm going to be sharing them with you first and foremost you should um be interested in knowing the prototype drugs first and foremost in every class of drugs there are lots of drugs like lots and lots and lots of drugs but then knowing the prototype drug will be able to you know curtail most of these things once you know the prototype drug obviously you know what the other drugs are going to be doing because the prototype drug is just like other drugs probably they'll just define their pharmacokinetic um, variables and stuff like that but the same mechanism of action almost the same adverse effects and stuff like that are basically the same so in any class of drug you're going to be studying in pharmacology try as much as possible to know the prototype drug for instance for the um aceis that's the um, angiotensin um um combating enzyme inhibitors such as the captopril the lysine pill then a pill and stuff like that the prototype drug is the captopril so once you learn about captopril it's as good as you have learned about the other drugs subsequently as you progress in the course you'll be adding other drugs to them but you should be interested in learning the prototype drugs and then you know the other uses of the other drugs or you know the key differences or the uniqueness of these other drugs that is different from the prototype drugs and another thing is that you should pay attention to the um um, what's it called this um surface of every drug because even if you don't know about the drug but the surface can actually give you an insight to the class of the drug which class does the drug belong to and then for instance you know about your beta blockers they end in lol so whenever you hear a drug that ends in lol the first thing that will come to your mind is that this is a beta blocker something like your metoprolol your propanolol your acetobutalol your labetalol you know all the laws that you know about these are all beta blockers and they end in laws now you also talk about your um calcium channel blockers most especially the end in the pain For example i'm low the pain and then um the rest of them the fed the pain and the rest of them you talk about your um, ac inhibitors the end in um your ac inhibitors end in pill example your lysinopril your capital pill your enola pill and stuff like that so they um a suffix of the drugs will be able to give you an insight to um the class of the drug and once you know the class of the drug you obviously know um what this drug might be doing do you understand so um this is the basic thing you should know and then another thing i'm going to be talking about is um um stay organized when i mean stay organized i mean you should have um you know a summary notes you should have your own study materials if you are the type of person that reads directly from textbook without you know organizing your work because pharmacology has outlines you use in discussing it for instance if they ask you to discuss any drug in pharmacology there are things that they expect you to write on probably they'll just give you what you emphasize on but then there is usually a particular pattern of writing distance you have to talk about introduce the drug you have to talk about their mechanism of action 
action you know you have to think about their pharmacokinetics like their route of administration the absorption their distribution their metabolism the elimination you have to talk about their pharmacological actions you have to talk about their clinical or therapeutic uses you have to know their contraindications you have to talk about their adverse effects you have to talk about drugs interaction if there is any well dosages is not important but if you know dosage that's a big plus for you guys so um i'm just trying to say that you really have to you know be organized most um, especially make your own notes you know your lecture was released slide you go to textbook you just organize it and then put up a summary that you can easily go through before exam period you know the whole aim is just you passing exams is the you can know the whole pharmacology in the in the whole world but then if you're not able to you know write something that will actually make it to pass in exams as good as you don't know it so um it might be actually very tedious and actually very 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 demanding saying that you're going to be reading your slides and textbook just like that without having something handy you always go through before the exams that's why i'm asking you to stay organized as much as you can you can have a flow chart for example i have lots and lots of flow charts of mechanism of actions and classification of drugs for instance um, um antibiotics you know there are various methods of classifying antibiotics but one of the most important classification methods is mechanism of action classification of antibiotics based on their mechanism of actions you know you have your cell wall inhibitors you know you have those ones that inhibit the dna gyrus and all whatnot those ones that cause me reading of dna and stuff like that so basically i have to classify these antibiotics you understand in a flow chart form so that when i go through it i will be able to you know remember a lot in just a uh, jiffy also we have antihypertensives and then you have different classes of antihypertensives you have your diuretics you have your ac inhibitors you have your angiotensin receptor blockers you have your calcium channel blockers you know you have your direct uh, vasodilators you know stuff like that and then there are different drugs under these classes so um you have to have a flow chart that will just you know it will just glance you and then um the whole thing just become very very fresh in your head and stuff like that so you have to be very organized try to write things the way you understand them you understand and that is very very important another thing i'm going to talk about is um you should try as much as possible to um try use um mnemonics you understand mnemonics are very very helpful in pharmacology but too much of mnemonics is very bad because when you have a lot of like you have a lot and lots of mnemonics like you might enter exam hall and then you start mixing things up and then it starts you know you know confusing yourself so you should make mnemonics based on you know um the important things that you are really finding difficult and then you should devise mnemonics for yourself you know that will suit you um you should you know look around you i mean you should um kind of you know try to develop a mnemonics that um you can easily remember and then you can link to a lot of things for instance um during the classification of cephalosporin i came up with a mnemonic myself it might actually sound useless to some other person but it actually helped me a lot for instance um the first generation cephalosporin i was able to think of something i thought about i have a friend that his name is fazo okay now this and, and actually i do have a friend that his name is fazo and then i would say that fazo is thin He's lazy and he's feeling drowsy every time. So um, we now have cef uh, um, cefazolin. So that fazol would now link to cefazolin. Then cefalexin, that he's thin. You understand? Then um, cefalexin, lexin, that he's lazy. And then cefadroxin, that he's drowsy, that he's feeling drowsy for it. So I was able to link this thing up. And then within a short period of time, I didn't even have to use the mnemonic. I always remember some examples of first generation cephalosporins, like the cefazolin, the cefalexin, the cefadroxin, and the rest of them. So I didn't have to bother using the mnemonic so as far as i've learned that in at heart i don't need the mnemonic any longer so there are lots and lots of mnemonics even online you can go to youtube you can go to google you'll see lots and lots of mnemonics that make sense for instance you can see the mnemonic for the um clinical uses of epinephrine as a b c d a for your anaphylactic so we are still talking about um, the use of mnemonics you understand so i was saying that there are lots and lots of mnemonics you understand that can actually make um you understanding your pharmacology very easy such as um the clinical uses of epinephrine we have our a b c d e a for anaphylactic shock b for bronchial asthma where it causes bronchial dilation um c it can be used in cardiac arrest d it can be used to delay um the um 
you know, actions of local anesthetics. For instance, lidocaine can be given with epinephrine and the epinephrine is there to make sure that the duration of action of the lidocaine is actually extended and stuff like that. Then E, it can actually elevate blood pressure. So it can actually give epinephrine to elevate someone's blood pressure. Now, these are pneumonics. There are other pneumonics online you can, you can easily get. For instance, um, the side effects of um, you know the AC inhibitors you can use captopril to remember them you know c for cough dry cough especially a for angioedema and the rest of them so i'm not going to be giving you guys this mnemonics probably not in this video but i'm just trying to encourage you guys to use mnemonics when necessary Let now i'm going to be talking about a minor on the minor what do i mean there are things that are irrelevant Yes, actually. There are lots and lots and lots of information that won't actually be useful in you in your training currently as a 14 medical student. I mean there are things like you still do medicine in your final year and um you still bring back this pharmacology but you actually appreciate it more so at this point i will actually advise you to major on the major and minor on the minor. It's not important really to me learning doses of drugs yes if you know the doses of drugs like i said earlier on it's good but it's not no lecturer will want you to know the dose of drugs besides you're not practicing i mean you are, you are still doing pharmacology so the important thing they actually want you to know now in every drug the important thing they always want you to make mention on for instance when you talk about you should talk about adverse effect of drug literally everybody will be talking vomiting nausea diarrhea almost all drugs have this adverse effect but there are specific adverse effects they want you to mention and these are what your lecturers are actually looking out for for instance when you're talking about AC inhibitors and then you didn't mention dry cough as one of the adverse effects you have not even started if I'm the lecturer and you just write vomiting diarrhea and nausea I'll just give you 0 0.25 0 0.25 over 5 if it has to do with if, if that point is 5 marks I'll give you 0 0.25 because you didn't actually make mention of the major adverse effect of the drug so you should know the major adverse effect of drugs that is part of the majoring on the major and the min and minoring on the minor so I've used um, AC inhibitor to cite an example so there are major side effects of a drug for instance penicillin one of the major side effects of penicillin is hypersensitivity I mean penicillin allergy you are going to mention the adverse effect of penicillin and you didn't talk about the hypersensitivity reactions my dear like it's as good as you didn't say anything so you should measure your measures and minor your minor and another way of measuring on the major and minoring on the minor also is knowing on um, drug of choice do you understand it's very very important for instance um let me use um 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 let me just say um something like organophosphate poisoning there's a drug of choice for organophosphate poisoning which is our atropine there's a drug of choice for acute or emergency lowering of intraocular pressure which is your um, um pilocapine then you can use um, um timolol and the rest of them for chronic lowering of um intraocular pressure like there is a, a, a drug of choice for mastina gravis there is drug of choice for anaphylactic shock there's a drug of choice for emergency hypertension like there are drugs of choice for laws of conditions so i actually expect that students have to know this drug of choice and then that is part of majoring on the major and minor on the minor because sometimes mcq questions can be drafted from these drugs of choices and stuff like that all right guys so that is part of the aspect i'm going to be talking about now i'm going to talk about the aspect of the next tip i'm going to be dropping is solve past questions now the whole aim of your understanding the pharmacology is for you to write the exam and pass if you know the whole pharmacology in the whole world and then you aren't able to pass the exam it's as good as you don't know anything i mean like literally yes so you should um look out for your school pass question you should check the past question know the nature of question they ask and normally i approach this past question on topic wise or let me just say yes not lecturer now because um one of the differences between our clinical training here and then um that of in basic medicine is that in our basic medicine every lecturer have what they teach but here in clinics they can change topic someone that taught somebody um antibiotics last year might not be the person that will teach another set antibiotics so i actually approach past question based on topics so i go to a topic probably i read antihypertensive i will look out for past questions for at least 10 years to know the various questions that are asked on antihypertensive so if i'm going for an exam and i'm expecting an antihypertensive question i already have a question in mind and i've already figured out how i'm going to approach such question 
okay so you should go through your past question and then solve them the way you will be able to answer it in the exam and then while writing um your exam i mean in pharmacology you have to write in bullet points and you use flow charts where necessary especially when you're talking about mechanism of action so guys we have come to the end of the study tip session for studying pharmacology if this video was very helpful to you kindly subscribe you know you know turn on your notification bell so that when i upload other subsequent videos you'll be the first to be notified when i drop if you have any question you have any comments you have any review to make kindly drop it in the comment section i'm going to see them and i'm going to reply them as much as possible so i'm going to be uploading the part two of this video and it is about the study materials we are talking about the various textbooks of pharmacology and then i will tell you the pros and the cons and you know just make a very concise review about this textbook okay see you guys in the next video